Now then, here we are in my shed, not a tent. And this is the place that I've made loads of cool stuff. It's the place where the magic happens. And I definitely did say shed there, not bed. So for today, I am gonna make you guys a knife. I've made plenty of knives in the past, but this time I'm gonna do it with a bit of a twist and that is using a battery pack. And this one's given to me by EcoFlow and it's the Delta 2. So the knife build is gonna be sort of off grid. So hopefully this will power everything I need to make a decent knife, which then can be used out there in the wilderness. Rather than showing you the normal boring way of what a battery pack like this can do, like powering a fridge, a freezer, a hairdryer, possibly a kettle, vacuum cleaner of course it can do all that but i thought i'd try to do something a bit different and show you a practical way of how this battery can be used because who in an apocalypse wants to be doing the cleaning sod that idea i want to be making knives and surviving so what do you need for making a knife well mainly you need a decent piece of metal for the blade itself i'm gonna use this and that is just a concrete cutting disc it's 300 millimeters in diameter and it's three millimeters thick, which is a really good blade thickness. Obviously it's flat and it's hard. You don't need to dick about with the heat treatment. You'll get a blade out of this, which will function pretty well without messing about. I've been through several of these in my time and I've never had one break or buckle or anything like that. So yeah, not a bad shout at all for making a blade out of. Also, we need just some tools. We need the power for the tools and I've got EcoFlow for that. Thank you very much. In this box here, we've got a load of knife making materials. There's some bits for handles, like some wood, some bone, some antler, there's some brass bits, just odds and ends that hopefully we can make something of. But yes, all this sort of gear, a brain that can design things and some hands that can make things. And that's pretty much all you need for making a knife. If you didn't know already, I've got several EcoFlow. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. If you didn't know already, I've got several eco for. Oh my god. If you didn't know already, I've got several eco. <laughs> Ready? I've got several eco. If you didn't. <laughs> if you. Shit. Come on, Al. Bollocks. <laughs> If you didn't know already, I've got several EcoFlow products which I have made videos for. So you might want to check those out just to sort of help you decide what sort of products might suit your scenario best. But this one is the Delta 2 and it's a one kilowatt hour uh, power station. Comes with some instructions and a warranty, which is a 24 month warranty. Some packaging. And then the power station itself, which is classed as portable because it's fairly lightweight to carry around. It weighs 12 kilos. And what helps with that, we've got these really good handles on it just so you can grab hold of it and hold it against your waist and carry your power to wherever you may need it. Great one to shove in the car and just uh, something that you can sort of carry about, maybe use for a party or something somewhere. Music, lighting, all that sort of game. On this side here, you can see we have got the display panel here, and then we've got four USB-A <laughs> A sockets and two USB-C sockets. On this side here, we've got four AC outports, which will suit your country, depending on where you're buying this from. And here we've got a 12 volt out as well. And we've also got the, hold on, it's a bit awkward to do is this, but this little panel here lifts up, and it always feels a bit sort of naffy this bit. It's the only bit that I am not 100% sure about. I always feel I'm gonna break it, but so far I haven't done. But we have got the inlet here for the AC, so it will charge, I think, 80% of this in 50 minutes, which is ridiculous, because it's a one kilowatt hour battery. We've also got a inlet here, which is for the solar panels. So you can obviously link up solar panels, which makes it into more of an off-grid sort of setup. On the front there, we've got two fans, which just help regulate the actual temperature of the battery. And also, if you can see here, we've got a little port, which just allows you to plug in another battery set next to this. So you can double the capacity or even link it into three and have triple the capacity, which will give you three kilowatt hours, which is a massive amount. 
For me doing this today, I don't think there's gonna be a problem because this has an 1800 watt output and my power tools, my grinder there is probably about eight or 900 watts. So I think it should cope very well. The last thing in the box are the cables. So here we have the mains charging cable here, followed by a 12 volt charging cable. So if you're going to use this as a van life setup and this is like your leisure battery and your sort of power hub, this is essential because then you can trickle feed whilst your engine's running into that battery. And when your engine's not running, you can use solar panels to power it as well. We've also got this here, which is another cable, which I have no clue what it's for. But all the information I'll put down in the description in a link to the website and they'll have all the specifications because for me, yes, I'm interested in it, but I just want to know if it works. So let's get on and make a knife. Right, let's design a knife. So I'm going to do this in 30 seconds. So I've got a pencil here. So all we're going to do is draw absolutely nothing it doesn't mark it so let's grab some chalk so a simple shape for a knife let's go with something like a rounded back we can have a blade at this side nice fat belly blade maybe some sort of finger hold into a handle so there we go simple as that so all we need to do now is get this cut out and then we can start shaping it to suit my hand mic drop Right, I've got my grinder ready. I've got a one millimeter cutting disc in here, which is in pretty good condition. So that should be absolutely fine. I do have spares if I need. This is an 800 watt grinder. So it should be absolutely fine running off this, which is an 1800 watt output. So you could run two grinders at the same time off this, no problem. So I'm gonna plug this in at the back, flicker on at the front. And as you can see, we've got 100% battery there. And I just need to now press the button at the back just to turn the socket section on. So with a surcharge as well of 2,700 watts, pretty much it will do any power tool. So it's pretty awesome for what it is. So let's turn it on and see what happens. There we go. It works. So let's get cutting. Eye protection, ear protection, just make sure this wire's not in the way. Let's bash on. we go look at that what was that oh yeah mate I totally agree it is an awesome shape knife straight away I absolutely love that and obviously I'm gonna mess about with it and just grind a bit more just sort of shape it a little bit more and where I originally drew I've got like a little bit of an indent there for a finger hold so I think I'll just take that in a bit more but there we go simple basics of a knife so I'm going to bash on with the grinder, do a bit more and just make it into a more perfect shape, ready to take a handle. ASA. bit more titivating with a grinder I've just put this little finger hold in here just so your finger locks in there 
and you can grab hold of the handle and hold it. So if you stab into anything, it just stops your fingers sliding off onto the blade. I like it. I think that's pretty cool, is that? Let's have a look at the uh, dial here. We are on 93%, so we've dropped 7% just by doing all that grinding, so it's not too bad at all, really. So plenty of power left to still carry on making this knife. So next stage, I'm just going to clean this up a little bit further, and then from there, we're going to have to start thinking about putting a handle on it. Next job then, what we need to do is put an edge on here. So I'm going to use this absolutely rubbish belt sander to do that. And it's all going to be done freehand. So all the pro knife makers, they've got all this well expensive kit to make knives. And to be fair, it just makes it easy. This is way more of a challenge just doing it with a few odds and ends that you might just have lying around your house like a grinder. So let's see what we can do. And again, I'm just going to shape this make sure that it's going to be spot on ready to take a handle We have an edge and a mess. Loads of filings there. So let's just check this power station and just sort of see how much energy is still left. We'll click that on. And there we go, 86%. So there's still absolutely loads of power left to complete this knife. So yeah, it's all going well. For the handle then, I've got loads of different options here. I've just dug these out of my magic drawer. So I harvested quite a lot of this years and years ago, so it's fairly dry. And you can see there, that's quite nice. There's some nice markings in that, which would come up well for a knife. Obviously, nothing's flat here, so it would need a bit of titivation just to get it into a working order to glue to that blade. And that is nice. You can see the grain running through this, but I do not like that black line there. And if that follows through, which it does, I'm probably going to reject that one. This is just some floorboarding or something like that, which is always quite good to use really, but there isn't much grain in that that looks any good. I don't really know what material it is. It's not oak, but the good thing about it is it's completely flat. So straight away that will glue nicely to the blade. What's this one? That's nice. You can see you've got some nice colour there. In fact, that is probably the best one. See how flat that is. Yeah, there's a bit of movement there, so that will need a little bit of a sanding down just to make it flat enough to fit the blade in. And then this one, I think, is a bit of cherry that I remember chopping down years ago. But that is, again, quite nice, but it's very lightweight, is that. It's not quite as hard as the oak, and I do prefer having a decent solid handle. I can use with that, though, some liners, so we could maybe have a green liner. Green is my favourite colour, so a green liner might look quite nice. Uh, I've got black there, red and white. So it's just a case of making a decision on what is going to work best for this. I think this might be my favourite. and It does fit on there, as you can see. And pop that on. So that would work well, with obviously the green liner possibly running down that spine. Cool, eh? I've chosen these two bits of oak here, which look pretty good for it. They're actually not a bad size straight away, as you can see, because what you don't want to be doing is cutting off more than you need to. But obviously it's too long, so what I'm going to do is, is just put a mark on here just to sort of see where, 
we are going to and then I'm just going to chop that off because there's no point having to sand off more than you need because that is just a waste of time so I'll pop them in the vise and let's get cutting As you can see, they're not quite flat, these two bits of wood. So where the blade's gonna sit, obviously you need to have it absolutely perfect. So what I'm gonna do is just flatten that off with the belt sander. And the other thing to consider when you're making a knife is putting an angle on these two here prior to actually gluing it all together. Because if you don't do that, you can never get to sand it properly without damaging the blade later on. Let me just see if I can show you. Here's a knife. There's another one I've actually made, you can see that. But what I'm saying is you just need to do some sort of little bevel on here just so it neatens it off and then you're not scratching the blade when you come to finally finishing it off. That's pretty cool though is that one and that just fits lovely in your hand. So yeah again that was actually made out of, you can actually see the little indentation there but that's another saw blade that I've made that from. But a beautiful knife and that has got some black liners and I think that might be some of that cherry actually. Not bad though. The two sides of the handle are pretty much ready to go now. If you can see there, this is super smooth on that edge and that's the main thing, just making sure that that's right. So if I just pop those onto this, you can see we just sort of fit in there. So I'll pop the other one on that way around. So all we need to do now is add the green liner, which is gonna fit either side of the blade there when it just adds a little bit of prettiness to it. So pop that on there and that one on there. And then we need to cut this out. I wonder if I can use this knife. <laughs> I doubt it. I'll just make it slightly bigger than what we need. Oh, it works, look at that. The best glue to use is this one from Gorilla Glue. I was advised to use this by a top knife maker, but the problem is this is absolutely rock solid. So I am on the second best thing, which is the Gorilla Glue epoxy. So I'm just gonna mix some of this up on this off cut of wood, and then we'll use that for, if I can get it to come out. Oh, this could be fun. <laughs> I don't have any glue. There we go. So we'll get some of that out 
And I've just got a tiny little spatula thing here, which is just a packer for when you're fitting windows and doors. I'll give this a nice mix up on here. Make sure you do it well. And then all I'm going to do is just paste this onto these liners and clamp it all together. The glue is pretty much dry on there, so I'm going to flip these clamps off. And then the next job is to just sort of get rid of any excess liner around the outside of that oak there. And then we have got to drill some holes through this, drill some holes through this. So I might be able to do it all in one if I can clamp it all together well. And I'm not using a pillar drill or anything, I'm just going to do it freehand with my uh, cordless drill. I have cut two pieces of metal here which are stainless steel. This is a pipe which is going to go at the back of it through there so then I can fit a lanyard to it. And then another piece here which is a bit of solid bar, if you can see that. And obviously that's going to go nearer the front there and that should just hold it all together with a little bit of glue. So let's get on with this bit. I've got no power. Hellfire, that's blunt. Come on, drill, you pile of crap. So now I've got those two holes in there, I need to transfer those holes onto the outside scales. So the way of doing that is using a braddle. So that's just one that I made, a tiny little spike of metal just into a piece of wood glued in. Nice and simple. So we'll just give this a mark in the centre of there. And then all we have to do is drill the hole. <laughs> My drill stopped working. Oh, come on. Oh, this is going to be a tough now. If in doubt, give it a clout. Not happy, is it? That is not happy. It's trying. Let's have a go then. No, it's gone again. <laughs> I don't want to buy a new drill, I can't afford one. Okay. Yeah, 
We don't like it though. Try a new battery. No. It's knackered, right. We're back online. Quick run out into the village and I've nicked this off a mate of mine. So we'll transfer this over. And I've just finished cutting this one hole. And hopefully, oh, there we go, we've got some power now. It is. So we'll just finish this one off. That's all it was. So we need to now just see if this tube and bar will fit through this hole. So that currently is tight because that's eight millimeter and so is the drill bit. So I'm going to increase it to an eight and a half millimeter drill bit and I'll do the rest in that, which I have got just here. Yeah, there we go. So we've got a tiny little bit of play there, so it just allows a bit of movement. The glue will fill the gaps anyway, so that's the main thing. Right, let's get on and get all these four holes cut. Right, we are ready to dry fit it. We've got all the components, starting with the blade. And then if we just pop this scale onto that side and we will drop the solid pin through the front. Then bring this scale and put this on this one. And just line those holes up somewhat like, and then drop this one at the back, which the lanyard's going to fit through. So there we go. It dry fits pretty well. So what I need to do now is clamp it without that falling out. <laughs> oh, that one. <laughs> right, let's start again. So we have, I've got one clamp on here, and as you can see, the actual pins are underneath the level of the oak because that allows you to actually clamp over the top of it. So what I might do is glue it up with a piece of wood either side, nice and flat, and then just clamp it and leave it overnight. But that, to me, is looking pretty good. Get in there. Oh, shit. Cool, eh? It is starting to look good. I'm well impressed with that. So once that's glued up, I will then need to sand it all down and shape the handle to suit my hand. So hopefully we've got enough energy left in this power station. Let's check out what we've got. 66% left of the power station from that one kilowatt hour full battery. So that should be plenty just to sand and shape that down tomorrow. In the meantime, I am gonna open a beer. This is another one from North Brewing Co. And it's called Distant Call, 6.5% and it is a New England IPA. I feel like I deserve this and I haven't had a drink for a good few weeks, so let's crack this open. Just the sound of that. Oh my God. And the smell. A quick read. A soft and full-bodied New England IPA loaded with juicy and rounded tropical stone fruit and a pithy zest flavor. Yeah, I can smell that all straight away. Let's have a taste. Oh, that is good. That is good. You can definitely taste that citrus in it. And well deserved. And it's a Friday night and I feel like I just need to have a drink every so often. I don't drink that much, but when I do, it's nice to have a decent beer. So thank you to North Brewing Co. for providing this. Mmm. Cheers guys. So I glued it up, set it in the vise instead of some clamps. So we'll just undo this now and hopefully it's set nice and hard. It's looking good to me, is that? Solid. So it's a case of now shaping this and making it into something that looks beautiful because currently that is damn ugly. So Grinder time, let's get plugged into this battery pack. We should still be on the 66%. We are. 
grinder is already in. Oh, I've got to change the blade. And the best cutting disc for this, or sanding disc, is one of these sort of sanders. And this is just like a, a flap disc it's classed as. But it's good because you can take off quite a lot of material quite quickly. Check this works. I'll go plug, press the button. Oak with green liners just looks awesome. <laughs> yep, that is a messy job. But if you can see there, we've chased all the metal all the way around, just giving it a rough smooth, and it does look rough still, but we have a functioning knife. All you'd have to do really is just sharpen it up a little bit by hand and that would work absolutely fine. Feels fairly comfortable in the hand already, but we need to make that nicer. We need to really get into this and just make this smooth and just a thing of beauty. But let's have a look at this. We are down to 52%. So half of this can make you this. So you can have a functioning knife after just half of the battery capacity of it. So it just shows you what you can do really with just something as simple as that. Anyway, I am now gonna get onto my little crappy belt sander and we're gonna just sort of fine tune this and just make it a little prettier. There we go, I've done all I can with the belt sander and it is looking slick. I am really liking that. So the next thing is to just get some sandpaper and give it a real good sand down and smooth it out absolutely perfectly. I mean, as it is, it's pretty good, but we like perfection. So I'm gonna go sit outside in the sunshine, get some sandpaper and just give it a real good sand down, probably for a good hour, I would have thought just to make sure that it's perfect and nice and smooth. I won't be filming myself from behind though. Let's get on. It is beautiful. Oak is definitely my favourite handle material, especially with green liners, because I just think the two together just look absolutely spot on. And it will look even nicer once I get a little bit of oil on here. 
just to bring out this grain a little bit more. I mean, you can see the grain there. Lovely that, isn't it? So with the blade itself, I just need to sharpen this as well. You can see I've actually got a pretty good finish on there already, but because it hasn't been done with a jig and machine properly, I've just done this freehand. I mean, it's pretty much spot on, is that? But I won't be able to do a perfect sort of Scandi grind on this. So my aim will be to just sharpen it up a little bit and do like a micro bevel on that final edge there just to keep it sharp. Look at that though. Bit of hard work for a day. I have sharpened her up and I started off using, I think it's about an 800 grit that one, but it's a diamond sort of sharpening stone just to sort of smooth it out. And from there, I've moved on to a Japanese whetstone. Uh, this is my old tatty one. It's completely bored just because I've used it that many times. So I don't mind using it on projects like this. I've got a nice new one which I use on all my really nice knives. And then I've gone on to a strop. So this is just a bit of leather which is attached to a piece of oak. I uh, made this from an old spanking paddle. <laughs> I am joking. It's actually a piece of floorboard, oak flooring, which is absolutely brilliant for using for things like this. Rock solid, you can shape it well. And I've put like a couple of indentations just to fit my thumb in. So it fits my hand really well. So then I can hold it against my body and then you can push it against like that and then flip it over and you've got a smoother side on that one. All you need is a bit of polishing compound on that just to sort of help shine it up and make it nice and sharp. So the next job is just to put a bit of oil on the handle. I've just found some boiled linseed oil here. So I'm gonna bang that on and that should just help bring this grain out and obviously seal it so it's not gonna expand with any moisture getting into the handle. So I think, Let's get on with that. Just need a rag. So we'll just use the knife. I just need a tiny bit of this off. And then we'll get a bit on of this oil. We'll give it a nice little wipe into there. There we go. Look at that. Nice, eh? this to this there we go a completed knife and we have made this in sort of an off-grid manner just by using the EcoFlow Delta 2 and it has done me proud obviously you can use all these different power tools off it and it's got no problem whatsoever doing that and the good thing is you can recharge it when you're out there so if you uh, have some solar panels you can plug those in and obviously just trickle feed that energy into it so you'll always have power but look, this is the sort of thing you can actually do when you are out there. You just need a few basic tools, a brain for design, and just some hands that can actually manufacture this sort of thing. So there you go, simple really. 
If you're interested in any of the EcoFlow products, then I'll leave a link in the description. This is the Delta 2, it is awesome. There are different sizes of power stations, so you can get little ones and some massive ones. And it just depends on what you're gonna use them for. And come winter, we are expecting some sort of blackouts by the government. So these things are gonna end up getting sold anyway. So pretty much snap one up while you can. If you like the video, give it one of those. And if you wanna follow me on Instagram, I've got an Instagram page set up. We've got the Patreon, we've got buy me a coffee. So anything at all to contribute towards the channel will be greatly appreciated because this is tough. It's a hard game, it really is. And I am just staying afloat. So anyway, thank you very much for everyone who's contributed so far. It's massively appreciated. And I just love doing this and you know getting out there and showing you guys what there is out there in this beautiful world that we live in, including some cool products along the way. So anyway, let's just have a quick look here. Still got 38% of battery left, so why waste it? I'm gonna get out and after seeing those paving slabs out there, I am gonna go do some jet washing. So let's see if it works with a jet wash.